the heavy duty shelving brackets that you can see there are so that I can hold everything in place and not have to worry about it dropping down on me. Okay, so I'm trying to install these panels in a 2.4 metre length um, and as a result the, the flexiness of the panel uh, and the flexiness of this metal fascia uh, is making it a little bit tricky to get them in place. So I've come up with a couple of different things. I could have just put bolts through here and bolted that directly to the timber that's underneath it, uh, but that would have left an ugly sort of bolt on that outside edge, and I want to try and keep that as clean as possible. Now, there might be a commercially available version of what I've made up, but I've got some metal strapping left over from when I did the hot tub, and I've made them up in a, a hook that fits on the inside of this metal fascia, and then ties back to the inside of the board so that I can tension that so that it's tight enough that it holds the boards in place uh, and stops this metal from flexing out whilst I'm trying to get it into the groove that's in this underlying edge. Basically what I've got to do is get the board up, clip it into that underlying edge and bring it up to this other piece of wood that I've put there and then I can attach it in place and it sits there solidly and then the final bit of trim can go into the corner and clean it up. The shelving brackets that are positioned in such a way that angle it up into that groove that I was talking about. Once I've got it set in place, uh, I'm just putting some temporary screws that are below the edge of the board. Uh, these again to just hold it in place so that I can slide it into that joining piece. From there, once it's joined up, I can put the screws in permanently and remove those bracket supports and move on to the next section. This is basically what I did right around the outside of the house uh, and it just allowed me to sort of manage those boards into place. Having that under eave section now basically completes the outside cladding of the house. So now I can move on to the inside and start working out what I need to do in there. The first thing to do was to get the electrics put in place and then I could start working on the insulation and the plastering. I'm fully insulating the house top to bottom, so I started out by doing the roof section. The blue strapping you can see there just helps me hold the insulation in place whilst I'm waiting on getting the plaster sheeting put up. And it was really just a matter of working on it section by section until the entire ceiling is covered. But with the walls covered in now, it's certainly starting to feel more like a house. And this is where I'm up to now. Uh, this will be the kitchen area. You can see the glass brick window there that I was working on in the last video. There's a little nook area that's going to be used for spices or whatever in the kitchen. That's the side window, back to where the front door section is going to be. This is back into the main living area. Back through now into what will be the bathroom area. This is going to be a full wet room bathroom with floor to ceiling tiles. Um, that there was the vanity that needs to go back, it's a bit big. We're going to go for one that's slightly smaller into the little hallway section. That's the covered laundry that we discussed before. Once again, it's got a little nook there for the storage of detergents and whatever. From there, turn around back into the main bedroom. Uh, you can see that now that it's got the walls on it, you can really see that it's got those really lovely high ceilings. Uh, there'll be a nice ceiling fan and light there as well. Uh, this section here will be the cupboard that we've discussed before. And again, really big cupboard. It's gonna have huge storage in there as well. As we go back around the corner, uh, we've got the linen cupboard area there, that's still a little bit incomplete. Back into the second bedroom. This is the smaller bedroom by comparison, which is going to be like a home office bedroom. Uh, we're going to do a Murphy bed off the wall there to maximise the space of this room. But once again, even though it's a small room, it's got that high ceiling feel, which makes it feel like a nice comfortable size room. I've yet to do the cornicing in this room, but uh, that's where we're up to now, is basically getting those cornice pieces in place. Uh, a little bit tricky in the corners because the angles are slightly off square to match the pitch of the ceiling. But all in all, with a little bit of perseverance, it's coming up quite nicely. And they should finish up the look of the room quite well. With all that done, it's time for a trip to the tip. Uh, we've got some waste plaster and some other building waste that has to go to the dump. So as a result, I've taken the opportunity to do a massive clean up in my workshop space as well and get that back to a clean environment too. So I've been pretty brutal in the clean up that I've done, chucked out a lot of stuff that I don't need. Uh, cleaned up stuff from other previous jobs that's been hanging around for ages and essentially I've just done a really good clean up and reorganise of everything within the workshop. As a result I've probably generated more mess cleaning up the workshop than I have done building the granny flat so far. But it's something that needed to be done and it's given me back the space in terms of what I wanted as far as having the workshop tidied up. Now that the space is back to the way I want it I can start getting back into other things. You'll see a little bit more about that in an upcoming video very shortly. 
but all in all, I'm much happier about having everything put back in its place so that I can start using this space for its intended purpose. So anyway guys, that'll be the update for this time. Thanks for watching, talk to you next time.